Welcome to another episode of Meal Prep Made Easy. Every week this month, I'm sharing a brand new meal prep menu that you can prepare on Sunday so you're eating well all week long. Remember that all of these tasty recipes, plus shopping lists and lots of tips and tricks, are available in my Meal Prep Made Easy cookbook. All of the details are in the description box below. We're kicking off today's menu with my awesome slow cooker lentil chili. I love this, it's perfect for Meatless Monday. It's really easy to make because the slow cooker is gonna do all the work. So for this recipe, I'm getting started with lots and lots of beautiful veg. I've got some onion, some yellow bell pepper, some red bell pepper, and some finely chopped carrots. I'm also going to be adding some minced garlic and some minced jalapeno, obviously. An optional step, you can feel free to leave the jalapeno out. Next, I'm going to be adding some dried lentils. I'm using green lentils in this recipe, but feel free to use whatever lentils you have on hand. I'm also going to be adding some canned kidney beans that I've just rinsed and drained. Lentils and kidney beans are loaded with fiber and so good for you. For my liquid, I'm adding some vegetable broth, some diced tomatoes, and some crushed tomatoes. Then I'm just gonna season this up with some beautiful chili spices. So I've got some chili powder, some ground cumin, and some garlic powder. I'm going to finish this all off with some salt and pepper, give it a good stir, and then set my slow cooker on high for three hours. You could also cook this low and slow for six to eight hours. Totally up to you. Once the chili is ready, I like to finish all of this yumminess off with some freshly chopped cilantro. Team, this is good stuff. This is good and good for you. Loaded with fiber, loaded with nutrients. Great for lunch, great for dinner. This chili can be served immediately, stored in the refrigerator for three or four days, or in the freezer for up to three months. Next up on today's menu, I'm making some incredible mushroom stuffed zucchini. Now, what's cool about this recipe is that it can be made completely meatless like I'm doing, or you could do it with some ground beef or ground poultry instead of the mushrooms. Now, I'm getting started with some beautiful zucchini, and all I'm going to do is cut off the tops and cut them in half. Then we're just gonna dig out these seeds. And the great part is we are not gonna discard them, we're actually gonna add them to our stuffing. I'm going to arrange my zucchini on a parchment-lined baking sheet and then get to work on my filling. So I've got a frying pan heating up on the stove and to that I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Once my oil is hot, I'm going to add some onions and cook those until they're nice and soft. Next, I'm going to add some garlic, wait until it's fragrant, and then I'm going to add my mushrooms. These are going to shrink a lot as they lose their water. And don't forget to add your zucchini pulp in too. And we're gonna hit this pretty generously with salt and pepper. I'm going to saute all of this yumminess for 10 or 15 minutes or until all the moisture has evaporated. You can see there's a whole lot less mushroom than there was before. But what there's a lot more of is flavor. Then we're going to remove it from the heat and let it cool for five or 10 minutes. Now that my mixture is cooled, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs, some beautiful Parmesan cheese for flavor, and one egg that I've whisked together really well. This is going to help our stuffing bind together. Now that our filling is mixed, we are gonna start stuffing our zooks. And then I'm just gonna hit each of these with a good drizzle of arrabbiata sauce. It's got a little kick to it. Honestly, any tomato sauce will do. And then we are going to finish each of these lovely zucchini boats off with another little bit of Parmesan. I'm going to bake these beauties at 400 degrees for between 20 and 25 minutes. And then I'm going to finish them off with a little more Parmesan cheese and some freshly chopped parsley. These make for a nice hearty main dish and they also happen to be packed with nutrition. I like to eat them for dinner or take them to work for lunch. I always love to have some cooked quinoa in my fridge because it makes a really healthy side dish and also a really tasty snack. But today, I'm taking my quinoa from here to here by adding some delicious fresh veggies. So I'm heating up some oil in my saucepan and to that I'm going to add some finely diced onion. When my onion begins to soften up, I'm also going to add some minced garlic. Next up, we're just gonna add our quinoa and our veggie broth. Watch out, we're gonna create a good amount of steam. I'm going to bring this mixture to a boil and then turn my heat down to low 
cover it, and simmer my quinoa for between 15 and 20 minutes. Once the quinoa is cooked through, I'm going to turn my heat off completely and stir in some beautiful cherry tomatoes that I've just cut in half and some fresh baby spinach. And it's gonna look like a lot of spinach at first, but have no fear, it'll wilt down to very little spinach and then it'll look like it just belongs there. I'm going to season it up with some salt and some pepper and there you have a super nutritious, really delicious side dish that is ready to eat. This will last in your fridge for between four and five days. We're continuing on today's vegetable train with some roasted sweet potatoes. I love oven roasted sweet potatoes. They're so incredibly flavorful and delicious. Now all I've done is peeled them and cut them into cubes. And then I love adding red bell pepper and red onion to my potatoes because it actually adds to the sweetness. I'm going to drizzle these with olive oil, a little bit of garlic powder and some salt and pepper and get these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure to stir them once or twice during cooking so they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. This is really, really good wrapped up in like a tortilla or you can serve it with a fried egg for breakfast. Oh, it makes the best breakfast hash ever. You can store them in the refrigerator for four or five days. For lunch this week, it is all about my really simple three bean salad. I'm getting started by mixing up a really simple dressing for this salad. So I've got some olive oil and to that I'm adding some red wine vinegar and some Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard helps keep it all together. We're gonna whisk all of this deliciousness together and then we are going to build our bean salad. In this case, I've got some kidney beans, some chickpeas and some green beans. Now I'm using canned green beans but feel free to steam your own green beans if you have time. That actually makes this even better. To add some color and some crunch to this salad, I'm also adding some green bell pepper, some red bell pepper, and some finely diced red onion. Now, if you have any important meetings this week, feel free to leave that onion out. It's totally fine. And then we are just going to dress this with our lovely dressing, some salt and some pepper, and we're just gonna toss. The longer these gorgeous beans sit in that dressing, the happier they are going to be. And I'm just gonna load this salad into some jars. I love bean salads for lunch. They're so filling, full of fiber, full of protein. You can store them in the refrigerator for four or five days. Now it's time to talk breakfast. And this week, that means my blueberry apple yogurt parfaits. And these all start with my amazing blueberry vanilla applesauce. Let me tell you, once you've nailed this recipe, you're going to wanna make this every single week, I promise you. It all starts with some apples. And all I'm going to do is just sort of chop them around the core. I am leaving the skins on. First of all, it adds some nice color to your applesauce. It also adds a lot of fiber. To my pot, I'm just going to add a good drizzle of water, a squeeze of lemon juice, and then an abundance of gorgeous, fresh blueberries. We're also adding a little bit of pure vanilla extract. And off this goes to the stove. Oh, and when it's done, it looks a little something like this. It is nice and soft and really easy to blend using an immersion blender. You can leave that as chunky or as finely pureed as you like. And all we're gonna do is let that cool before we build our parfaits. We are just going to divide some yogurt evenly in five jars. And then we're gonna add a nice drizzle of this incredible applesauce. And then you can really sprinkle these with whatever toppings you want. In this case, I'm just using some crunchy granola that I had on hand, but you could definitely do this with some nuts if you wanted to, or some chia seeds would be great. I can't get enough of these because they're just so pretty. They can be stored in the refrigerator for up to five days and they make the perfect breakfast on the go. For our snack this week, I am whipping up one of my very favorite dips. It's my green goddess dip and I love it because it is packed with beautiful fresh herbs. Now every time I use the word herbs on this channel, I get a ton of comments about the right way to pronounce that word. Herbs, herbs, tomato, tomato, whatever you prefer. So I'm starting off with some gorgeous fresh herbs. In this case, I've got some parsley, some dill, some tarragon, and some chives. 
Feel free to use whatever combination of leafy herbs that you love. I'm gonna hit this with some minced garlic and a good drizzle of olive oil to help it all come together. And then I'm going to give it a few quick pulses to help blend it up before I add the rest of my ingredients. So now we are going to add some lemon juice to brighten up all those flavors. I'm also going to be adding some crumbled feta cheese and some Greek yogurt. On goes the lid and I'm going to blend this all up until it's nice and smooth. And when you're done, look at this ridiculously yummy dip. It's so green and beautiful, perfect with veggies. You could even spread it in a wrap, would be amazing. This delicious dip will last in the fridge for up to five days. And that's it folks, meal prep is complete. I really hope you'll give some of these tasty recipes a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo, because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And don't forget that all of these amazing recipes are available in my Meal Prep Made Easy ebook. All of the details are in the description box below. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there's lots more meal prep where this came from.